The first time the Three Peaks Fell race was held was in 1954, but the first time anybody attempted to run the Three Peaks race was a couple of years before that when three men, um, Des Birch, Arthur Dolphin and Jack Blower, attempted to run the Three Peaks from Ingleton. Only one of them finished, that was Des Birch, and he took nearly six hours. But the first race was in introduced two years after that and there were only four finishes. We used to start and finish at Hill Inn, but the fields were much smaller then. You, you used to get 40, 50, 70 or 80 runners, and by the time they reached Helton in Ribblesdale and they climbed up Penny Ghent, it had thinned out, and you could pick your own way up Penny Ghent. But once we started getting bigger fields, and we switched the event location from Hill Inn, which was too small and cramped, to Horton in Ribblesdale, then we had to make a clearly defined route up Penny Ghent and stop people taking a free, a free choice. We do have sections of the route that are flagged and are negotiated with the local farmers, especially for our use. But we've worked hard to preserve that. For instance, we always put on a special supper with free drinks and free food and we invite all the local landlords and farmers to that and we do that about four or five weeks after the race. This also gives them the opportunity of telling us of any complaints they might have. This year we've got over 500 starters. So we've got runners from the south of England and I often wonder where they manage to train when they come from Norfolk and, and Kent but we get quite a lot of people coming down from Scotland as well from Edinburgh, Glasgow clubs that come down. The full route is 24 miles, they've got to ascend three peaks, that's Penny Ghent, Wernside and Ingleborough in that order, each of them over 2,000 feet. The race starts at Horton in Ribblesdale and we have the benefit of using the playing field there which is made available to us by the residents. We go up the road and then we take up the route that goes towards the shooting box at the foot of Penny Ghent. The runners then have to climb Penny Ghent by the Pennine Way route and reach the summit of Penny Ghent. They then turn round, retrace their steps and come back the same way and pick up Selgill which drops down to the Pennine Way route. You've got eight miles really between Penny Ghent and Ribble Head and it's been likened to a cross-country race. Someone once said to me the three peaks races, um, three fell races and two cross-country races in between and I know what they mean by that. But the three peaks was the first long distance fell race to be introduced and since of course it's been copied there are several other very good long distance fell races now such as the Wasdale Horseshoe, the Annadale and the Borrowdale um, in the Lake District. I think it's grown out of Yorkshire, Cumbria and Lancashire really. It took off I think in the, um, in the 50s and early 60s. That's when the Fell Runners Association was formed during that period. There had been the guides races in the Dales, the short fell races like Burnsell and Kilnsey and the equivalents in Cumbria such as Grasmere which are straight up and down with a winning time in the region of 15-20 minutes. They follow the Pennine Way route up as far as God's Bridge, drop down through Nether Lodge and take up a track that brings them out on the main road between Horton and Ribblesdale and Ribblehead. They then have approximately a mile of running on the road to the Ribblehead T junction with the Hawes Road. Then starts the tough climb up Wernside, which is the highest mountain of the Three Peaks, and head for Wernside Summit. Mm -hmm. 
They then take a track along the top of Wernside, drop off to Pilpin Lane and pick up the road to the hill in Chapley Dale. There is a checkpoint at the hill in Chapley Dale with a cut-off time and if the runners reach the hill in after that cut-off time they are not allowed to proceed. Well, I think the most difficult part of the race really has got to be the climb up Ingleborough because by that time you've run for 16 miles, you've ascended Pennygent and Wernsite and you're pretty shattered and then you're first with a 2,000 foot climb over Ingleborough and that is pretty tough. One year of course we had to cancel it. The snow was so bad that uh, we realised that people wouldn't be able to get to the start of the event and we cancelled it and we deferred it in fact we, we held it in October. But we've certainly had severe gales, we've had heavy rainfall, we've had blizzards. We did have a fatality in the years, in, in the race about 20 years ago when conditions were very very poor on Ingleborough and it can be run in poor conditions, we've had blizzards and um, one of the runners from the south of England unfortunately went astray coming off Ingleborough and ended up um, dying of hypothermia. Since then we've introduced conditions and you can't enter the Three Peaks race unless you are a reasonably experienced fell runner. You've got to have completed two Fell Runners Association fell races that meet in certain categories that mean that you are capable of running around the Three Peaks without getting into serious difficulty. The problem is that a lot of people that are walkers, good strong walkers, and probably walk the three peaks in around about eight, nine hours, they think, oh, I'll have a go at the race. But it's completely different running the race in shorts uh, and vest and lightweight gear. If the conditions turn bad, you can't find waterproofs in your rucksack to put on to protect you. And you've got to have the experience to deal with conditions which may become severe, and that's why we're restricted to experienced fell runners. They, they have to carry certain items of equipment. One is full lightweight body covering, the other is some emergency food. And they do send their own drinks to the two valley checkpoints at Ribblehead and Hill Inn, which are made available to them for a drink, or the, very often they take a banana or some muesli bar or something of the sort to pick up en route. But they have to carry some emergency rations. Kendall mint cake is a favourite. We've moved with the times and technology has taken over. Um, all the runners are given an electronic chip these days and they just enter this chip which is held on a wrist strap into um, a box on the various checkpoints that is on the summits of Pennygent, Wernside and Ingleborough and the valleys and this records their time there and when they get to the finish they just insert their electronic chip into a little box and get an instant printout not only the finish time but the intermediate times at all the intermediate checkpoints. You never know when anybody's going to get into difficulty. With the best will in the world if you're running off Ingleborough and you're pretty shattered you've already run 17 or 18 miles and you have a fall sprain your ankle somebody's got to help you and this companionship and that exists between fell runners they will always help one another if necessary very competitive but if anybody gets into difficulty then it's expected that runners who come to them will offer assistance despite the fact that they're going to sacrifice their own performance and I think that is the spirit that exists in fell running turn round at Ingleborough Summit and then they have a six mile run back down to Horton Ribblesdale to finish. That comes down via the shooting box through the um, limestone clints and drop down straight to the finish at um, Horton and Ribblesdale playing field. Well done Andy. I've completed the race 21 times. My best years were um, when I was in my late 20s, nearly 30s, and I was, um, I, I was actually second four times, but I never won the race. The record is two hours, 46 minutes. This year it's been won in two hours, 51 minutes. A good performance is to do it in less than four hours, and you've got to be a good class fell runner to run around the three peaks in less than four hours.
Today the conditions have been ideal. I've talked to one or two runners who told me the conditions today were the best they've ever known for this particular race. So we're keeping our fingers crossed for next year because next year it's the World Long Distance Mountain Challenge and um, we want to make a success of that. It will be the first time that event's been held in the UK.